up for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, since 1879, this school has been the leader in education, oh, for many, many years, as it said, from 1879. However, on today's show, we're going to learn a lot more about MMI Preparatory School here in Freeland. Uh, we, my pleasure today to interview a number of people so you get a full understanding of what MMI is all about. We're going to start off with the head of the school, uh, and Tom Hood. Uh, Tom, thanks for inviting us here. Sam, thanks for coming. We're really happy you're here. Well, this has uh, been an institution that my uncle came to uh, many, many years ago, uh, and I remember him walking from uh, Partiesville, going to MMI, uh, and my father came, I think, about a, a year as well. So we're going back a little while. And, uh, but you talk about excellence in education. Uh, this is really a, an asset to Northeastern Pennsylvania, believe me. Well, thank you. It's an exciting place to be, and we do consider ourselves an asset and a part of Northeastern PA. Uh, We've been here since, as you said, since 1879, and for so many years we were known as a science and math school. And we take pride in, in the science and math curriculum that we have here, but we're so much more than that now. We're a broad liberal arts education uh, that includes a, a rigorous curriculum in the humanities, as well as the arts, both the visual and the performing arts. And we really treat this as a... Uh, a development program for our students. So you, you're talking about, uh, you know, it excels in many areas, okay? But in the math and science, particularly where you excel, um, you're, you're, what's MMI's main focus today? Well, our main focus is to prepare students for college for, this, for a school that is a good fit for them. And we do that through a, a development program that is beyond academics. We really are looking at what we call four pillars of excellence here. It includes academics, which we've been strong in for 130 years. But it also includes athletics, uh, extracurricular activities, and service. And we believe that those other three pillars are equally important for the young people of this area to be properly prepared to be successful in college and beyond. Now, there are many projects that MMI is involved with. So let's talk about some of those. Well, as you've seen, it feels like we've been building for the last five years in the different areas. But again, they're tied back to our pillars of excellence. We, uh, we did not have athletic fields uh, prior to this recent build of our athletic fields, which is uh, just a couple short blocks from the school. And we've added a baseball field, a softball field, and a soccer field. So our kids have a place that they can call home, and they can go and play, and truly play home games with the support of their uh, classmates. Uh, if you drive past Center Street, you see the uh, Joseph A. Turry Library and Learning Center, which is a great new facility uh, that our students can go to and, and continue their academic studies. And uh, it's, just, it's just a destination at the school. And then finally, we have uh, something that people don't see, which is a music studio downstairs. And we, uh, it allows our students to go down and take individual lessons, to work in ensembles, uh, to really study music as well, which we think is an important part of their education. So you're covering it all here, aren't you? We absolutely are. We absolutely are. Well, you, you know, you, you measure uh, a lot of things from results of tests, okay, uh, whether you're getting it for physical, whether it's a blood test or whatever, everyone measures things in, t in terms of tests. Um, your SAT scores, let's talk about them, quite impressive. Yeah, thank you. We, uh, we take a lot of pride in our SAT scores, and that's the way that colleges measure students today. And, uh, you know, recently there was a list of the public school SAT scores in the, both the standard speaker and the citizen's voice. And if we had been on there, you would have seen our name at the top of the list. Our uh, critical reading and math scores are an 1145, which is the highest on that list and above the national and state averages. Uh, additionally, what wasn't on there is the writing score, which is 574, and the writing score research has shown is really indicative of students' preparedness for college and to be successful in college. So we think that that's a, we're very proud of that and proud of the faculty that makes that happen. Speaking of the test and speaking of staying on top of things like MMI is, is currently doing, uh, what are some of the, um, how do you keep up with the current trends in education? Well, there's a lot of them now, and uh, it's always a challenge. Certainly technology is one that's being talked about a lot, and uh, we're moving down that path as well. Our school is now completely wireless, and our uh, prep school students, grades 9 through 12, are able to bring their devices into school so that they can use them for note-taking or take advantage of the many resources on the Internet uh, for simulation and demonstration purposes. So we think that's a great addition. But at the end, it's really about the teacher. And we're excited that we have this technology and that we're following these trends, but 
our faculty is a world-class faculty, and they have an individual interest in each one of our students. We know every single one of our students by name, and uh, I just couldn't be more proud of the job our faculty does. Okay, so I, I'm watching this, uh, this show now, and we're talking about MMI Preparatory School, and Tom, you're the head of school. What's head of school? Well, head of school is essentially the same as a principal would be at another school. I'm responsible for the everyday operations of the entire school. I have an academic vice president who's responsible for running the curricular and extracurricular activities here at the school, but we also have an admissions department and a development department so we can stay in touch with our alumni as well. Well, today, folks, we're going to talk to some of those people and let you know how the process works here. All right, so I'm sitting uh, and I meet you for the first time, and, and my when should I start thinking about sending my 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 children to uh, MMI? Well, we start in the sixth grade, and obviously we'd like to have your these children earlier rather than later. The more time that we have to work with them, the more that we feel that we can prepare them uh, to be successful, to gain admittance to, and then be successful to world-class colleges. So fourth grade, fifth grade, I should be thinking about sending them MMI. Absolutely. What, what should my child know? Should they be in a higher percentile? What about their grades? You know, is my, really, can my child really make the grades here? Everybody will be successful here. And, and I like that. <laughs> I like that, Tom. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and uh, there's been a, a perception here that only the smart prosper. That's why I asked that question. And I appreciate it because that's not the case. We take a, a broad cross-section of the students. We're looking for students that are hard workers, that want to learn. This is the place for them. And so we bring them in, and we're going to pay attention to all their needs, not just to the smart kids. And uh, we take a lot of pride in a kid who goes from a C to a B as much as we do as having A students here. You talk about the teachers here, and you talk about the quality, and there's no question, you know, born and raised here, I know the quality. And, and I say we're talking about northeastern Pennsylvania. But, Tom, you know, you, you could have gone anywhere. You know, you, you have a quite impressive background. I know you don't like to brag about it, but you have a very impressive background. You bring a lot to the area, okay, with your knowledge. And and it filters down to the uh, the teachers as well as the students. So why did Tom Hood uh, decide to come here to MMI? Well, it was an opportunity. I I, I kind of say, why would MMI take a guy like Tom Hood? I just uh, I'm a big fan of Northeastern PA. My parents live in Central Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been familiar with this area for a long time. And when I got out of the service, I wanted the opportunity to work in education, and uh, MMI made that opportunity available. We love this area, my wife and I. We, uh, we think it's a, it's a hidden gem, and that sometimes people that have been here for a long time forget that it's a hidden gem. There's just so much to do and so many different opportunities for our youth and for adults here. See, you come into the area and see it through different eyes, and you see the successes that MMI has done. The, I, I find that when I come to the, the school here and talk to the faculty, you're actually right. You, you feel a warmth here. You feel a com you're comforted. There's, there's, uh, sometimes people may have different feelings about higher edu you know, a school like MMI mm -hmm. Preparatory School, but you make everyone feel comfortable, and I think that's a tribute to all your teachers and staff here. It absolutely is. We, we talk about the MMI family. We're a family. We know our students. We know their parents. We know their grandparents in many cases. And we want them to come here. The first order of business when it comes to education is to feel comfortable in your environment. And so it's imperative that we do that. And you have a lot of nice support. Uh, a lot of people who are on your board, a lot of people in the community uh, throughout Northeast Pennsylvania really are support the school. Uh, I know a few of my friends who come to me and say, Sam, what can we do to help MMI uh, for the students? And, and, you know, in the world we're living in today, you know, you want to try Try to do as best as you can, right. and certainly you know you you have the staff and faculty to do it here, uh, Tom. Well, we do. We have great support of a board. We have great support of alumni that come here. The loyalty. When I talk to my peers at other schools, very well-known national schools, they're jealous of the loyalty and support we get, not only from our alumni, but from members of the local area. I mean, I really think that MMI is a part of this community, and it's a part of what makes us successful. Coming here today to do the interview, I was outside, and, and uh, the students are coming in, you know, and I saw a couple outside, and so I was talking to them, and, you know, they're, they're smiling, they're happy, you know, it's like, we're going to school, you know, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. people go to get, and they're excited to, to come here, you know, and that's, that's you know, it's, it's uh, was uh, quite impressive. You well, know? thanks. And, and oh, by the way, the faculty and staff are the same way. I yeah. can't wait to get up every morning and come to work. They're just a great bunch of kids. That's really a tribute to their parents, and uh, we love having them here. Well, for those people, I know it's folks, we're going to talk uh, to a number of people here at MMI today to give you a better understanding about MMI and what they have to offer. Telling 
the viewers as to, as the head of school, what would you tell our viewers as to why they really should consider MMI? Well, MMI is an affordable institution and it's an institution for the people of Greater Hazleton. We want your sons and daughters to come and experience the educational opportunities that we present and uh, we look forward to them starting that process by talking to our Director of Admissions. You're watching the Sam LaSanne Show. All the information is on the screen, folks, to get in contact with them and just to get information. Uh, Tom Hood is the head of school. Now let's talk to Stephanie Sandra. Well, folks, so we're in the library now, uh, and we're going to speak to uh, Stephanie Chandra, who is the college counselor. And, uh, you know, as I remember when I was in high school, Stephanie, the counselor was very important to us uh, because, you know, sometimes um, you, you don't know what you want to do, what college you want to go to, and you need guidance, okay? So as the MMI college counselor, um, what is your role here? Mm, well... It still exists today that the students need guidance and, and that is my role here. I, I work very individually with all of the students in 10th through 12th grade on the entire college process. So beginning as a sophomore, students are looking at what types of careers they might be interested in, where their interests lie, where their values lie, looking at what types of jobs they might be interested in doing. How does that link into a major choice? What types of majors are out there that they might not be thinking of? And then looking at, well, what kinds of colleges then fall into the category of having those majors? So looking to see how, how do they go through that process and search and find them? And then moving into the junior year, we get even more involved in finding the colleges, going out to visit the colleges looking at um, different types of scholarship opportunities. We all know money is very important when it comes to um, college. It's very expensive these days. So looking to see what kind of scholarship opportunities are out there for our students. And then we look at and start working on things like the college essay. I read all of my students' college essays and edit them, usually two to three times, making sure that they are perfected, ready to go out to the colleges, working on things like the college resume, making every aspect of the application perfect or as near to perfect as we can so that these students are putting together you know, the, the best application that they can. And then as seniors, I work very closely with them on submitting their college application. So making sure that those college applications get out on time, making sure that students have taken all the standardized testing that they need to take to submit those applications um, and basically just working very closely with the students but it isn't just me who does that our teachers are also working very closely with the students now they may not be reading their college essays as often as I am but they're working on the academic end and making sure that our students are succeeding the best that they can in the classroom so that when the colleges receive the transcript the most important piece of, of every college application that it is the best representation of how our students perform here at MMI. And so our teachers are always available after school to work with students who might be struggling and in fact are often reaching out to those students during the class or after class and saying, come and see me, come and see me at three o'clock. You, know, you know, please, I'd like to work with you on this chemistry problem or let's, let's take a look at algebra. You know, it seems to be that you struggled on last, you know, this past week's exam. So they really do work very closely, just as I work with them on the college process. The teachers are also focusing on, you know, another very important part of the whole college application process. You know, uh, <clears throat> your, your job is very critical mm -hmm. because you're, you're determining sometimes a person's livelihood what they're going to be in, in sure. you know as a, in the future um, and the interesting thing about MMI is that it become it's a curriculum mm -hmm. okay um, I remember as I said in high school we had to make appointments and if you couldn't make the appointment but here it's part of what yes. the, uh, the curriculum which I think is really important uh, you come in uh, many students they may tell their parents what they want to be but you know they come in school the teachers see what they're capable of doing then they come to you as a counselor and you're working one-on-one -on -one and going through the whole process from 10th grade up to seniors mm -hmm. yes and in fact I actually have a class with them once a week so this is I'm, fantastic. I'm meeting with every one of my students in a classroom setting how many, how many times have you seen someone come say I want to be a broom and and I, I want definitely want to be a doctor or I want to be a lawyer and they turn out to be an engineer or something like that. Right. Well, you, you hit the two most common. They always come to my office first and tell me they want to be doctors or lawyers yeah. and then by the end of it they're, they want to be forensic scientists or yeah. they're looking
working and, and wanting to become a, you know, a mediator or some, something like that. And I know you have a ton of people who want to be TV talk hosts. Of course. I mean, they all come and say, I want to be a TV talk Communications host. and broadcasting, number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> now, your relationship, it, it, not only are you on top of these students, which I think is fabulous, really do, uh, as a former educator, I, I think that's critical. Thank you. But your, your relationship with colleges is extremely important. And what about that relationship? Yes, so another thing that I, I pride myself on is having strong contacts within the admission offices at, at many colleges and universities. So yes, at many of our local colleges and universities, but also colleges and universities across, across the state of Pennsylvania and, and across the United States. So I, I'm oftentimes going out, and, and I think one of, one of the favorite parts of my job is the fact that I get to go out to college campuses that are that are really in Ohio. I've I, I've been to a college tour in New Hampshire, and I get to meet personally with these admission officers and see the college campus with my eyes. And I can bring that experience back mm -hmm. to MMI and to the students. And it's it's just it's wonderful because I can tell them I can look at the colleges and kind of match up what I know about the student with what I know about the college. And sometimes it really does make a perfect match. Now, how's how's your success rate been? Very successful. I've had 100% of my students go off to college and since the class of 2010. They were my first graduating class. Well, Stephanie, I could definitely see that you're excited about what you do. Oh, it's, I am. And it's a critical job, really it is. And um, once again, as I'm going through um, the, the, the school here and talking to the uh, teachers as well as uh, Tom Hood, uh, you find that the people here at MMI, the teachers, the students, really are involved here. And I think that's great. I really do. Thanks for coming on and explaining your role, and I wish you the best. No problem. Thank you. Okay, folks, we're moving on our journey here at MMI Preparatory School, and remember all the information's up there on the screen, uh, and you can watch us 24-7, so if you have friends or relatives anywhere in the world or in the country that like to know a little bit more about MMI Preparatory School, tune us in. Now, let's continue our journey. We have the uh, science instructor, uh, uh, the science faculty member, uh, Michael Neal. And Mike is the science instructor at MMI uh, School here. Mike, tell me about uh, the science curriculum at MMI. Sure, thank you. Actually, what you see around you is students who are working doing discovery science. And so we start with the ground up. And so in sixth grade, most of our students come in and they learn the scientific method. And so we, we start at the basic and we work our way up through discovery science and observational science and hypotheses driven science. So what we see in here is something you see on a daily basis. You see actually work in the lab. The best way to learn something is actually to do it. And so with this foundation they can move on into ninth grade, general biology, build from there and then also into some of our electives. My electives are anatomy and physiology, environmental science and marine science. I also teach health and I teach life science and general biology. We do implement a lot of technology and so most of the things we do in here now in terms of labs are different than they used to be um, years ago. One of your electives are, is environmental. That's right. Okay, and recently you won Pennsylvania Envirothon competition last year. You won first. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, the Envirothon is actually a competition that is based um, within regions, and it's, um, it's a competition to see how much students really grasp about what's happening around them. And so it's, it's based on different aspects of our environment. There are components that are based on forestry, based on wildlife, based on aquatics. And students will test in groups on these stations. Depending on how they perform, you can move from the regional level to the state level and then ultimately to the international level. You're pretty involved with the science department. Absolutely. We're talking about the teachers that are coming here and, and every teacher and the students all seem excited. Uh, they all enjoy coming to MMI. What do you like best about MMI as a teacher? I like the freedom. I like the fact that students that come to me basically, number one, are some of the, the best students that I, I've ever experienced. Number two, I think the fact that I can open up and teach the way that I really want to teach just helps them evolve too. I mean, we're, we're all creative learners and we all really need to utilize that rather than just pulling information from a book we have to use a lot of peripheral resources and we get a chance to do that here like no one else. We talk about the people watching and deciding should they send their students or their kids to uh, MMI preparatory school. What would you tell them why they should send them here? Well, I think, number one, as we talked about before, the, the, the thing that we have that, that overshines here is that we have teachers who are really dedicated. We have teachers who spend the time. We have teachers who make sure on an individual level the students are really getting the information they need so we can build a good foundation for, for college um, and for university study. And so that, in terms of motivation,
motivation is huge. The second thing is that we offer resources, that we have peripherals. We uh, participate in Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science, the Envirothon, as you've seen, the Biology Olympia. There is so much more going on than just what you see happening inside of the class, and we introduce students to a broad spectrum of that. My own children will be coming here when it's time, and so, you know, I, I couldn't say it best. If it's, if it's for, good enough for my kids, I think it's good enough for everyone else, too. As a teacher myself many years ago, I, th I always felt that you need to know the students one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And what better place than MMI preparatory school where you, the teachers know each one of the students, their capabilities, and what they, what they can do and that they can achieve. Small classroom size, and that guarantees that we get to have that level of communication. The fact that I know most of them, and I know them very well, not just how they are in my class, but teachers talk in general. And so we, we share that experience. We share where they're having difficulties and find out strategies so that we can overcome those difficulties. And I think that's an aspect that it plays in huge in terms of their overall education. Well, I sense a lot of excitement in this school. I sense a lot of excitement and a lot of dedication from teachers and particularly from the students. And folks, uh, uh, the information that you need, uh, you can get on the screen. Uh, talking to Michael Meal here, who is a science faculty instructor member, uh, they're dedicated to what they're they believe, and that's important. Now let's continue our educational journey here at MMI. I'm here now with Kate Langle, who is the um, social science faculty members. And folks, no, they didn't make them as pretty like this when I was going to school, I'll tell you right now. Uh, Kate, thanks for coming on Thank the you. show. Uh, I'm very impressed what's going on here at MMI, and it just gets better and better. Now, we talked about science curriculum and, and a lot of other things, but humanity courses. Yes. Let's know what you do here. Well, I teach 7th grade history classes, 10th grade history classes, and also some of the AP classes. The advanced program placement courses that MMI has, tell me about those. We have a nice variety of AP courses at MMI. We have some in the science departments, uh, literature, language, history. I do the AP European history. This is the class right now. They're preparing for their midterm exam tomorrow. We uh, go from the Middle Ages to as modern as we can, very in-depth get as much of an understanding as we can for European events. How would you, you factor in the different twists in education uh, that, you, that you have here at MMI? I think that here we have smaller classrooms, which is a great benefit to us and also to the students. They get more individualized attention. We have more of a chance to try different types of teaching techniques with the students. Where if we had a larger classroom, we may not have time to do that. So I really appreciate that opportunity within the AP curriculum. Tom Hood spoke about the quality of teachers, okay, and that's the key. I mean, teachers are the key. Why do you like it here so much? I am amazed by our faculty. We have some really accomplished teachers here. We have teachers with several master's degrees, with PhDs. We have teachers who are always encouraged by our administrators to continue their education, and they just give these kids their all. It's, it's um, a whole different uh, process than was many years ago. We're talking about when people should be considering to uh, send their, you know, their, their children to um, uh, MMI and uh, starting, of course, the, the best thing is to start at sixth grade. What would be your advice to telling parents as to why they can, should consider MMI? I think that in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grades, parents should consider sending their kids to MMI because of the foundation they can get. It's an excellent way for them to develop some of the study skills, uh, a discipline when it comes to time management and scheduling and that way when they get to be in ninth grade it's much more of a seamless transition and they'll be much better prepared for success. Now I see the students here and they're all excited about their midterm exams I can see that but the uh, the thing is I was talking about how the how the the students enjoy coming here and the teachers enjoy coming here and that's a tribute to MMI isn't it? It is it really is we are very lucky to have the students here that we have who are willing to learn who want to learn um, I'm very happy to be working here. Uh, and I'm sure they're very happy to have you here, too. Uh, we're continuing the journey here at MMI Preparatory School, folks, giving you a little taste of what this um, school is all about. It's an excellent school. It's a tremendous asset to Northeastern Pennsylvania and to, um, to many students. Uh, there are many successful graduates uh, that have come from MMI, and it is, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming in. Okay, so let's move on now, folks, and learning more about MMI Preparatory School here in Freeland. Okay, now, folks, we're going to talk to the Director of Admissions and Financial Aid, a good friend of mine, I know her for many, many years, April Laurie Whitley, uh, who is, uh, has this position. And, April, thanks, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, the teachers, um, the faculty, uh, the place is beautiful. Um, 
Now the question comes uh, when you're talking about MMI preparatory school, affordability. Okay, um, how do we look at the affordability? Um, some people say, I want to send my, my kid there. I want to send them at sixth grade, but I don't know if I can afford it. I think when parents look at MMI, that is their first question. They really want them to come, but how can they afford it? And um, we're very lucky at MMI because we have uh, strong area businesses and we have alumni that donate to the school and that makes it possible for us to give scholarships, uh, need-based financial aid to students who are coming in. We, um, we were able to give uh, almost $900,000 in financial aid every year and we have about 55 to 60 percent of our students on financial aid. We encourage our families to apply for it. Not everybody gets it, but we do encourage them to apply and we walk them through the steps of the financial aid application if they need that. So before I panic and before I make any decisions, check it out first. Absolutely. Okay, because that would be the, so you know, just don't get nervous, find out what the availability is, okay? The other thing is, um, as you, 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 this is a fa fabulous in institution, great teachers. Um, does my child have to be a bright student? Well, we think all of our students who come in are bright, um, but we have a, a very, very diverse student body. We have um, diversity in many different ways at MMI, uh, economically, um, ethnically, and our students have many different types of talents. You know, they're musically inclined, they're athletically inclined. Um, but no, students who come to us, a lot of times the parents see that their student can be challenged more, that they might be bored in school, or that they just feel that they could accomplish more. And that's what we do here. We take the children when they come in and we assimilate them into the MMI curriculum and um, they don't all have to be your number one students coming in, but I can tell you that they are definitely exceptionally bright students going out. And the other question is, you know, uh, first of all, if, you're, if I have a child who's in fourth grade or fifth grade, okay, um, you know, you, you certainly would encourage them to start at sixth grade, correct? And why, why would yes. that be? We always encourage students to apply early, sixth grade and seventh grade. And the reason for that is because it is an adjustment coming to MMI. Many of our students find that the curriculum is a little bit different. Um, there's usually more homework and we expect a certain quality of work from the students. So there is an adjustment period. To make the adjustment in the sixth grade and seventh grade years gives them a foundation when they hit the prep school years, which ninth grade, tenth grade, that's now on their college transcripts. So we would rather they make that adjustment in the earlier years than when they're going into what's going to count for college. And another big piece of it is there may not be spots in our later years. Mm -hmm. We found that, you know, once the students hit ninth grade, we have very limited openings mm -hmm. and if a student winds up in a weight pool, they may not be able to enter MMI, not because they're not qualified, but because we just simply don't have the room. Okay, well now, we, we still want to give some hope for some people. There may be people watching the show now or their children may be in seventh grade, mm -hmm. okay, or eighth grade. Um, we certainly do, do not want to discourage them from coming, uh, you know, in, or applying here at MMI. Right. Okay. Uh, and, and so with that being said, what's the process here? What, what do we do? They can call me at 636-1108. Um, I can set up an appointment with them. They can come and tour the school. We have visitation night coming up on January 29th at six o'clock. And the public is welcome to attend, see the school. They get to talk to our students. They talk to some of our parents and our administration. And we also have the entrance exam coming up. And all of our students who come into the school take the entrance exam and that will be on February 2nd which is a Saturday. In closing um, uh, April I've learned I've learned a lot today okay um, and it's in interesting because you know you live in an area and you have such a great asset in the area and you don't know that much about it. Your, your background you've been around for a while um, and um, why why do you think people should consider sending their their children here to uh, MMI? First and foremost, it's an absolutely excellent education. Our teachers are fabulous, they're world-class teachers, and we prepare our students for college. So when our students leave the MMI campus and they attend college, they already feel as though they've gone to their first year of college at MMI. So it's very easy for them to step into a college classroom and mm -hmm. feel right at home.
Well, April, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Hood for inviting us here. Uh, folks, I hope you learned a little bit more about MMI Preparatory School, but there's a lot more to learn about it. They have a website. Uh, you can call April Laurie uh, here at MMI. Numbers on the screen. Learn a lot about it, and you'll find out we have a tremendous institution here uh, in northeastern Pennsylvania. Ranks among the best throughout the United States. I'm Sam Lassant, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.